Hey, how you doing? This is more Vue CLI version 3 stuff. It's a follow up to my last video. I just converted one of my big projects over to Vue CLI version 3 and its tooling. And it's been awesome. But there are a few things that I learned along the way. It might help you out. First couple things will be related to CSS. Make this bigger for you. Vue CLI version 3 will handle CSS imports. It'll put your CSS together. What it won't do is post CSS process things that are being imported. Like if you have a main CSS that's getting imported through your JavaScript and it references a variable CSS, that variable CSS isn't going to get post CSS uh, or CSS next processed. So you're going to end up with variables that aren't backed up by the actual variable value and things like Internet Explorer 11 won't really work with that. So you need to install post CSS import and then in your post CSS RC, you need to run that before you do your next gen post CSS kind of stuff like post CSS preset ENV. Run that first in all of your variables and anything that's imported from main CSS. Like uh, my main CSS is generally nothing but a bunch of imports and it's importing variables and you know different things. It's importing some CSS from different node packages. It's all just imports. So by using post CSS import before you do your other post CSS processing, it will handle all of that stuff for you. So you will need that. Another thing to notice to note when you're using post CSS import is your relative paths in your CSS modules might change. For example, in this YouTube CSS, from this CSS file where it's located in this folder, you actually want to go back up one and then out to this assets folder. But because post CSS import is squashing that all into your main.css, which is already one folder up, you give this a relative path here instead, which is a little confusing, but yeah, it works. So that's your CSS stuff. Now onto your JavaScript stuff. Really cool stuff here. You can add to your Vue CLI service build this dash dash modern option. And what that does is rather than having one uh, vendor and app chunk JS that includes all of the Babel fixes for older browsers, it divides it into JavaScript for modern browsers and JavaScript for uh, crap browsers. So you'll end up in your distribution folder, a chunk vendors and a chunk vendors legacy. And in your index.html, let me just save this so it isn't quite so crazy looking. What I'll do at the bottom is do your chunk vendors as this uh, type module, which your older browsers won't understand, but your regular browsers will. It'll run this function saying, if you didn't know what you know this module thing was, it will load these legacy JavaScript files instead. So what that does is, is your package for the good browsers will be much smaller and it won't be all hacked with things that are much less performant and take longer time to parse. So you get better performance from modern browsers that way. And it's all handled for you. Uh, one thing to note here with JavaScript uh, is the Babel fixing that it does in your older, in your chunk vendor, in your legacy vendor, uh, includes promises. It doesn't include fetch. So if you're using fetch or something that uses fetch behind the scenes like Axios, you'll need a hack in there for that too. Rather than adding that to a dependency to the main JavaScript file, and therefore making everybody get that, up at the top, I do a test for a window.fetch, and if it's not there, it will uh, 
put the polyfill in for you. Now this does a document.write, which some people don't like because when a browser sees that, it can kind of turn off some performance stuff sometimes. Doesn't seem to do any difference here, so I just left that in. So this is doing a polyfill as needed rather than a polyfill as default, which is great. So, ah, one other thing I was going to show you. If you want to put in extra Webpack modules, and I did, here's how you can do that. In your view config.js, there's your configure Webpack, and this is where you'd have your no parse for Mapbox GL, which by the way, Mapbox GL 0.47.0, which is just released, it fixed whatever thing Webpack didn't like, so you don't need this module anymore. I'm just leaving it here commented out in case I need it again in the future. Now, this was a little tricky. I needed to include a, a new Webpack plugin, but I only want to include it when it's running the production build, not during development, because it'll actually hang during development. And this is the HTML critical Webpack plugin. Uh, and you'll need to include that as a, or as a require up here so it'll know how to find that. To get that to work only in production, I pass to Configure Webpack the config, which Vue is using, Vue CLI is using behind the scenes to hold a lot of stuff, including the Webpack configuration. And then to the, uh, if it's in production mode, to the config plugins, which is an array, I push a new element to that array. And that's your new HTML critical Webpack plugin and all the options for that. Well, this does the critical plugin. It uh, actually isn't part of the regular Webpack flow. It, it, it runs at the end. It takes your index.html that was produced and it analyzes all of the elements in your HTML then it looks at your CSS and it pulls the stuff from the CSS file out, out of there and puts it in line in the HTML page. So your CSS is now no longer a, a blocking thing. It's not in your head and the browser has to wait till that resource is fetched and then it has to parse it and all that stuff. It can look right in your index.html file and then the rest of your CSS loads later and that makes for a much faster initial initial paint so your perceptual speed goes way up which is very good so i think that's that's what i found when i was adding this to an existing project let me show you what that looks like if i can find a browser window launch something in Develop mode. First, we'll look at what this looks like in terms of loading assets. Now, this did uh, everything: loading the map, loading the 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 map tiles, uh, loading everything twice, kind of, because uh, it's also putting stuff into a service worker. It did all of that in 664 kilobytes. If you don't include the service worker stuff, it's it's actually a it's it's more like 400 kilobytes. The service worker stuff kind of comes later. So it's this is for a full you know pretty app with icons and and this image here and a map and the map tiles and everything in even with everything, including the service worker stuff. The service worker does is you'll load your JavaScript to load the page, and then the service worker will actually load it again, kinda, to stick it into the service worker's cache. So it, it ends up making the download size look a little bit bigger on first load. Since I'm in a, a uh, anonymous, uh, incognito mode for the browser it has to load everything like it's the first time so we're looking at a whole interactive map doing all kinds of weird and wacky things in well under a meg and that is pretty cool now let's look at performance how it did there i say too this is this is smaller than it was before because it is 
uh, it is not having to load all of the, the Babel hack stuff for the JavaScript that it used to because this is a modern browser and it doesn't need that legacy chunk file. It can use the modern one, which is a bit smaller and parses faster and runs faster. We'll go to audits. We'll run our audits. And I just left all of them on. And this will take a few seconds. Uh, benchmarks are interesting. They There's different ones and they do different things. It's almost more important, not what benchmark you pick, but you, you consistently use the same one. So you're getting an accurate baseline. You're using all the Lighthouse stuff. And this is what we get. A 96 for performance and a hundreds across the board for progressive web app, accessibility, best practices, and SEO. Uh, that's uh, super amazing, awesome. Go Mecklenburg. Because we inline the CSS, you see we get that initial first paint in under a second. If we don't inline the CSS, the critical CSS with that critical plugin, this uh, is like uh, 1.4, 1.5 seconds. And ideally you want that under a second for the kind of stuff we do with mapping and stuff. Sometimes you're not gonna get that. But here we're, we're well under a second and that is pretty amazing. Perceptual speed index of uh, 99, input lace the 100, so it is about as perfect as I can get. It, it's kind of hard to get a, a 100 performance rating on something that uses JavaScript in any meaningful way. But that's the whole, uh, and this is a GeoPortal, so you can see the code for that and see how I set it up. But those are a couple tips for using the Vue CLI and configuring it properly and for your, your post CSS and adding additional Webpack modules. I think that's it. View CLI, I am really, really liking at this point. I think it might be my new favorite build thing. And uh, by the way, the way it's building, it's uh, supporting Internet Explorer 11 as well, even with the mapping and so forth. Anyway, I will catch you later. Bye-bye.